Hi, my name is Wendy Hathaway and I am an Inside Sales Account Manager with Emerson. I will be showing you how to wire your Rosemount magnetic flow meter using individual component cables. Magnetic flow meters generate a small induced voltage signal that must be measured to provide a flow rate. When using a remote transmitter with a sensor, using the correct cable and making the correct connections are critical to the performance of the flow meter. In this video, we'll review the correct remote cable and connections. Cable connections are needed between the transmitter and the sensor to provide power to the coils and to retrieve the induced voltage signal from the electrodes. Remote cable can be purchased from Emerson or alpha equivalents can be purchased from a local cable vendor. The coil cable transfers power from the transmitter to the coils in the sensor to generate the magnetic field. Emerson uses 14 gauge twisted shielded pair two conductor cable for this. The alpha equivalent part number is 2442C. The electrode cable carries induced voltage signal from the sensor to the transmitter. Emerson uses 20 gauge twisted shielded triad three conductor cable for this. The alpha equivalent part number is 2413C. In the transmitter junction box, all of the conductors and shield and drain wires are connected to the corresponding terminals. Here are the connections shown in a wall mount housing. Within the Emerson cable color scheme, the coil drive circuit will be red on one, blue on two, and drain on three. For the electrode drive circuit, we have black on 17, yellow on 18, white on 19, and the drain on the housing ground screw. In the sensor junction box, the colors and numbers of the cable should match what is connected in the transmitter. Only the conductors are connected to the corresponding terminals. The drain wires should be snipped with no connection on terminal three and the housing ground screw. As you are preparing the cable for installation, remove only enough insulation so that the exposed conductor fits completely under the terminal connection. Best practice is to limit the unshielded length, D, of each conductor to less than one inch. Excessive removal of insulation may result in an unwanted electrical short to the transmitter housing or other terminal connections. Excessive unshielded length or failure to connect cable shields properly may also expose the unit to electrical noise, resulting in an unstable meter reading. Conduit entry ports to the junction boxes can be ordered with half-inch 14 NPT or M20 female threaded connections. Conduit connections should be made in accordance with national, local, and plant electrical codes. Unused conduit entries should be sealed with the appropriate certified plugs. The plastic shipping plugs do not provide ingress protection. For installations with an intrinsically safe electrode circuit, separate conduits are required for the coil cable and the electrode cable. For installations with a non-intrinsically safe electrode circuit, a single dedicated conduit run for the coil and electrode cable between the sensor and the remote transmitter may be acceptable. Removal of the barriers for intrinsic safety isolation is permitted for non-intrinsically safe electrode installations. Bundled cable from other equipment in a single conduit are likely to create interference and noise in the system and should be avoided. Neither electrode cables nor output cables should be run together in the same cable tray with power cables. Be sure to select an appropriate conduit size to feed cables to the flow meter. This completes the overview of how to wire your Rosemount magnetic flow meter using individual component cables.